dude, this is, this is coming out fantastic. All right, guys, today we're focusing on scanning circuit boards with our two favorite scanners, the Einscan HX and the Einscan Pro HD with the industrial pack and automated turntable. Now, we do sell all of these on our website at visionminer.com slash scanners. So if you're interested or if you have more questions, please do consider going there and checking out all the pricing and the current packs. And we have a lot of bundles and accessories and things like that. And if you have more questions, you can always give us a call. We'll set you up and we can even do a live demo for your application. But moving right along, why would you want to scan a circuit board? Well, you know, there's really a lot of reasons, but mostly for casings for PCBs or, um, you know, fitment and tolerance uh, within another system or a machine. You know, Gerber files generally are in 3D, and this can be really, really useful if you want to design accurate housings and account for the I.O. ports and, you know, the buttons or maybe uh, USB coming out the side or whatever, like a Raspberry Pi, you know, there's a lot of different reasons you might want to create something custom, perfectly fitting for your PCB, especially with the internet of things and everything coming out in 2021, 2022, it's getting crazy. Let's go right into the Pro HD versus the HX. My pick for this application is really gonna be the Pro HD. And this is primarily because most circuit boards aren't huge. They're not more than, you know, about yay big, a uh, few hundred millimeters. And the Pro HD with the automated term table makes smaller parts a breeze to scan. Way easier and more accurate than spending 10 to 15 minutes with this thing getting every little data point. Now, that being said, we will have to use some kind of spray on these because they have reflective and dark parts all over, which is gonna mess with the structured light scanning of the Pro HD. Now, the HX, I can actually use the laser mode and get very, very fine detail. It'll just take a little bit longer and it'll give me the ability to do much bigger parts much easily or much more easily with better tracking and other things like that. But if all I'm doing is circuit boards and small parts, then this thing is going to save me time and time is money. So this is my main pick for this. But we'll do a little example, a little um, shootout, if you will, about how they really do. Now, uh, just a moment on the spray. We've got this stuff. It's available at visionminer.com. Uh, it's called AE Sub. It's a vanishing spray that leaves this next to no residue. There's scientific papers on how little residue this stuff leaves behind. But what it does is it's basically like spray paint. It's going to coat the object in a light color, which is gonna reflect light for any structured light scanners. And it's gonna make it really easy for the scanner to pick up all the features. Now it is white and there's an orange cap and a, well, an orange cap, a white cap, and a blue cap. They're all white. Uh, it's just the amount of time that the sprays last. So this will be about anywhere from two to four hours. The orange spray is 12 to 24 hours, and the white spray is actually permanent, but can be washed off. So we'll be getting into that. And of course, why wouldn't you just use calipers to measure where things are, and you can you know, model based off that? Really, it's a, it's a huge time savings. So we're gonna take a couple minutes and have a perfect 3D scan, 3D model of each individual component versus spending hours and hours and using calipers and having that, you know, that just the risk for error is much greater as well. Other than that, make sure you're subscribed and leave any questions or anything down in the comments below. Uh, and we'll have a lot more content and videos coming like this in the future. So I hope you're enjoying it and let's get right into the workflow. So I'm going to start out, I'm actually going to start with the HX here. So this little thing, it's already plugged into the computer. So I'm actually gonna plug in the power on the back here. We got it plugged in. And now I'm gonna use our proprietary scanning pyramids, which basically have all the little markers on them. And this gives me some angles to work with. Uh, which one should we do today? Uh, I'll keep it simple and small and detailed and we'll do this little SSD. I think this was for a red cinema camera. So I'll just put these little markers laying around and that'll give the scanner something to uh, basically measure off and, and know where it's at. Now I don't want to move the markers and I don't want to move the object, but we're going to scan it real quick and it should do pretty well. Basically I'm putting the markers around it a little bit larger than the object. So no matter which angle I'm getting at, it'll have something to see. It'll have markers to see. And I'm not gonna put any markers on the object itself because it's too small. So 
I'm gonna open up the HX software here. All right, we've got the software open. I'm gonna do a laser scan for the accuracy and for the reflective parts, really, because the HX has the blue lasers, which do require markers, but it means I don't have to spray anything because it can pick up the dark colors and the reflective surfaces and things of that nature, so we don't have to spray anything. All right, I'll make a new project group. Car call it circuit one. All right. I'm gonna go high detail. I'm gonna go 0.2 millimeters for now. Obviously you can go all the way to 0 0.05. Just takes a little bit longer. You got a, just a lot more data points to gather. So I'm gonna hit apply. And then I'm in here and I'm just gonna leave it on normal mode. And we're just gonna go for it. So I can actually take the scanner, hit the button. And now we've got the preview. It's definitely getting data. So now I'm going to Start picking up data. I'm just gonna move it around like a paintbrush. What are we at? 10 seconds. We should have a, uh, have a timer on screen. All right, so that is maybe 15 seconds of scanning. No, 30 seconds of scanning. All right, so just with that, let's see what it picked up. Super crazy detailed looking in this view. Definitely some room to go. We got a tiny little PCB. Okay, so I'm gonna just make a little cutting plane. I'm gonna slice some of this plane. Fit the point cloud, create the plane, move this up. There we go. So I just got my, everything but the PCB is cut off. Apply. And now I'm gonna select a part of the PCB and then hit connect to domain. And then I can just invert that and delete the extra data. Still got my markers in there, that's good. And let's just run right through it and go uh, generate point clouds. Let's just take a peek, see how detailed this really got. I mean, I got the main stuff. So depending what you're doing with this, this could be very well enough data to work off of. You didn't get a lot of the super, super tiny components, the little solder points and everything, but I got the big chips so I can make a heat sink off this. I also got the slots for the IO, so you could uh, design. That's probably enough to design a, a housing, honestly. So 30 seconds with Pro HD, pretty good detail. And that was a 0.2 millimeter point spacing, which something like this, I should have gone smaller. Uh, but for the sake of time, we're going to go mesh model. And I'm gonna keep it on water tight. It's gonna do a couple of spike removals, little cleanup operations, filtering, and we'll just go for it. All right, so there's my on water tight model. Okay, so if I hadn't already moved this piece, I could leave it there, look at my scan data, and actually go back in and add to that scan. Or I could take this and scan it again, get more data, do the other side, align everything, and have a complete model. But for now, we're actually gonna go into the Pro HD, use a little bit of spray, and see how good those results are so you can really actually make an informed decision. So I will unplug my HX, boom just so it doesn't get confused. Multiple scanners, open up the XScan Pro software. All right, so I got the software for the Pro HD open. I'm gonna use my fixed scan. That's when it's on the tripod, which comes as part of the industrial pack. The industrial pack really just includes the tripod and the turntable and then some extra markers and things like that. Create a new project group. Let's do circuit 02 HD. Non-texture, texture scan is when you're doing color. Uh, so there's an additional color pack available for the Pro HD if you do want to do color. But we're not using that today. So we got this, I'm gonna use my turntable. And instead of doing HDR, I'm just gonna use manual brightness. So I'm gonna position my thing right, oop, where is it? Everything's oriented backwards. Give you a little better view of that. So I've got this centered. Now I'm gonna grab the AE sub spray. I'm gonna pick a feature over here that has nothing on it. 
Now, fixturing is actually a thing in 3D scanning. So I'm gonna take this and, you know, we need, we need it to be on here, but we need it not to move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring out the original 3D printer, also known as the hot glue gun. We sell machines that have hot glue guns actually on a robot. It's not actually a hot glue gun, it's a 3D printer, but uh, we specialize in high temp stuff. So if you need functional 3D printers, check out our website. Anyway, I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue, which comes off easily with a little bit of isopropyl. I'm just gonna put a little dab right there. Let it cool just a little bit. I'm just gonna sink this right down into the middle of it. Okay, I wanna make sure that it's totally stable before I actually start giving it motion because I don't want it falling over. All right, that should be cool enough. Now, if this part is too small, I'll have to attach it on a larger object and then we'll just cut out the bigger object. It's actually one cool thing. You can do tiny objects, but the secret is, the trade secret, and you watch this long, so you're getting the trade secret, you can actually take a larger object and attach your smaller object to it. Scan the larger object and then you get all the data in there. But if it's too small by itself, you won't even be able to scan it. Pro tip. Anyway, let's go and try this. I got eight points. We got no HDR, don't need that. Got the turntable coded targets. Let me change my brightness so this should be just about right. And let's give it a shot. Hopefully this goes as planned. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Starting to get a little bit of the circuit board. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely coming out better, but I'm missing data. I think it's too far away. All right, so delete data. I'm gonna go back in here. Let me get a little closer. I'm gonna change the angle so that we're at an appropriate working distance. And actually, I gotta slide this thing all the way around so I can really get that angle proper. Line it up in the crosshairs. All right. Now we should be good. So let's try this one more time with eight steps all the way around. Ooh, look at that. That made a big difference, guys. Just got a little bit closer and now it's picking up not the outside stuff, just the circuit board itself. So another pro tip, make sure you're in the right working distance with your object. And dude, this is, this is coming out fantastic. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. All right, yes, fantastic. Okay, so here is our mesh. You can see it still did pick up that corner even though it didn't have the spray on it. It's kind of a greenish color, but awesome. Let's go ahead and I don't even have to delete any data. So there's workflow speed number one. Apply edit, and then I can come over here and mesh the model. Let's do on water tight. Since we don't need it adding extra data, we just need the actual shape to design our model around. And psh, there you go, there's an STL. So that got, I would say better detail than the last one, than the HX did, definitely more complete. And if I wanted, I could turn this in other orientations and get even better data. But I know where my plugs are. I know where my heat sinks could go. I know where the mounting holes are. I've got all the data I need in, was that a minute? Let's figured it out. Uh, man, yeah, that's good. Just a little bit of spray and way less work. All right, man, so golly, it's good times. We've got great results really from both considering. So if you've got a lot of bigger objects and you want full color and you want the lasers for dark and reflective stuff, the HX is hard to beat as an all around system. But if you've got a lot of small parts and you've got just workflows where you're doing tons of different tiny or medium sized parts that you can spray, something like this that disappears, no residue, then the Pro HD is probably going to be your best pick. Now we do sell all of these and use them all day here at Vision Miner. So 
if you've got more questions or if you've got a different application, give us a call. We'll get you set up with one of our guys here. We'll run a demo. We can scan parts for you, whatever you need. We also sell and supply high temperature, high performance 3D printers and accessories and filaments and everything else like that. So all we do, it's all we've been doing. And uh, let me know what questions you got down in the comments below, what you want to see us do next. And we're happy to do so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Check out visionminer.com slash scanners for more info and have a positive rest of your day.